So, um, just finished watching a stream where a developer attempted to create a desktop client for Leechess. And I figured, eh, what the heck, let's learn something. Um, so that said, I'm not a Ruby developer. Um, I haven't touched Ruby in about a year. Um, most of my day-to-day -day stuff does involve me dealing with applications that are Java-based. But, you know, um, I have dealt with Ruby before. And Ruby is far less painful to write, um, well, to script things in, frankly, and see if they work and then refactor it and rewrite it and do this, just repeat the iterations over and over until something successful happens. Um, so, that said, um, I downloaded um, some gems from the Ruby gem repository, um, one called Fay WebSocket, and one called Ruby Chess. And there's no way in hell I'll be able to integrate the two, but isn't it great to dream? So, um, you can see here my first attempt, I copied the code, replaced the uh, URL or URI with uh, websocket, socket.leechus.org. Uh, it turns out that that does not actually establish a websocket connection, but rather just returns the HTTP code 200, meaning, okay, you've connected to the server, but that's not a web socket. Um, so then I found, well, honestly, um, Zug shared this particular URL, which he got from his browser, which says secure web socket, socketleechess.org, blah, blah, blah. And we see down here, it opens a socket. Isn't that great? Hey, welcome. Um, so, Beyond establishing a socket, which apparently was challenging, for sure it's absolutely challenging to do that in Java. I don't know. Don't know whether I would end up slitting my throat or not before succeeding with that in Java. Um, but in Ruby, I was able to take somebody's example code. Uh, actually, not just somebody's example code, but... Um, Oh gosh, uh, I had the GitHub page open. It provides this complete example of how to establish a WebSocket client. And then just replace the URL and there we were. Um, yeah, I spent a while before the stream trying to find the Leechess API. I think the API page moved or something. Um, what did I find? Oh, actually, I went to Google results, and I found a cached copy of the Leechess API. Why is this all white? Oh, because this is... Okay, I'm not logged in, because this is cached Google results. That's why it's a bright theme. Uh, sorry for the people's eyes bleeding or something as a result of me switching from dark to light and light to dark. The goal? I don't know. Let's, like establish a socket connection, and hopefully get the moves from the Lee Chess TV game. That's a goal, right? Like, if I just go leechess.org slash TV, it shows you the top-rated game. Can we do that from a client? Oh, yeah. I have no doubt whatsoever that a lot of what I'm trying to do is extremely difficult to do. And I would never dream of doing it in Java. Um, and it's probably not feasible. And people have asked uh, Lee Chess developers and staff, hey, could you do this? And hey, even I'll write the code. Can you let me write it? And we're like, okay, sure, you go do it. And they never come back with any kind of success. Um, I mean, occasionally you do find a bot uh, developer who succeeded in doing something nefarious, 
And that's not my objective here, but really they're the only ones who manage to succeed at this sort of effort and only for a very limited time until they are quickly discovered and uh, disposed with. Um, yeah, just observe the socket frames in Chrome and go from there. Yeah, so basically... Oh, oh yeah, we got some really mature content on here. Mostly because of our audience, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, hey, we're looking at combat here, guys. Real combat. Real 3D combat. How about that? Hmm. I actually prefer... Oh, let's look at the... No, that's disgusting. Let's go to the dark theme. We're now on the dark side. Um... Search for the socket frames. Okay, sure. Yeah, it needs to have a battle chest theme. Um, wouldn't that be great? Actually, on the topic of theme, I know you were talking about a visual theme, but um, let's get some music going. Come on, where's my music? That's quiet. There we go. Some mood music. Um, all right, so we want to, how many tabs do I have open? Um, inspect the source. Now that doesn't show up on the stream. I don't want to capture my whole monitor because that gets disgusting pretty quickly. But yeah, I should be able to... Oh, why are you not showing up on the stream? Uh, I don't know why some chat messages aren't showing. I blame Knight's uh, chat server. Shoot. That's really unfortunate. What's going on on Knight's chat server? I don't know, but that's where I get my chat window from. That's... Wow. Copy link address. Okay, then go over here. And then main.rb. And something like this. Oops, we don't want three connections, we don't want two connections, we just want the one. Ruby main.rb, open, close, 1006. Um, oh, I guess that closed our socket. Oh, connection attempt to something, connected, disconnect, connection attempt, huh. Okay, fine, I'll put on the monitor capture. There we go. Um, so, I'm not sure. Okay, this establishes a connection on a different port number. I don't know how any of this stuff works. Hey, I am writing Lee Chess for the desktop. But I'm doing it on a Linux SSH connection, so yeah, I think it's a Leechus desktop client. Yeah, I mean that's the hope. Zug said it's easy. Who am I to disagree? But I'm gonna learn something either way, so that's the fun part. Um, yeah, but yeah, if I do like links or something. Can links do web sockets? I mean, how do I test this? Links, connect to the socket thing. Okay. Um, maybe that worked? I don't know. Links, socket, and wget, socket. Hey! Okay. 
EG socket, da, 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 um, open SSL. Okay, sure, whatever. I'm not sure what EG. Oh, use file as the entropy gathering daemon socket or demon socket. A user space program that collects from various unpredictable system sources and makes it available. <laughs> so that's how you want to generate randomness. Open a cell allows you to specify your own random file. Okay, I don't need to do that necessarily, but I could do wget. Oh, secure web sockets not supported. Man, how do I test? Like, I don't want to write code. I want to just script and see if I can create a browser. I want to make my own browser that's not a browser. It's basically what I'm saying. Um, uh, let's move this. Lee Desktop is now going to be Lee Browser. Okay. Um, I mean... Oh, wait. Why am I sending Hello World? That seems like a really dumb thing to send to Lee Chess. I don't think they would appreciate that message very much. Um, let's try this. Main open message. Hey, look. Um, okay. At least I can see who's in the crowd. How about that? Um, See, this is why I don't want to spend an eternity writing boilerplate code. Because uh, there are more interesting things that can be done. So, we got a crowd, we got a TV select. Oh, the TV select has a mapping. I wonder if I could pretty print that JSON. Um, maybe. That's a really weird way of it being formatted, but um, yeah, definitely I'm receiving packets over the socket. I'm not sure if I'm expected to send back heartbeats or something saying I'm still connected and I'm interested in subscribing to whatever it is that you could tell me, but um, or possibly I'm just waiting for the next game to end. Let's see. Crowd one user. Oh, close. Okay, socket's been closed. Okay, that's cool. Um So the next thing is figuring out How is it that the browser manages to keep reconnecting? Like, when I tab back over here, I get, I still have a connection open. Right? Inspect. I mean, do I have to reattempt to connect every minute, every five minutes, every something? Hmm. Oh. Um, maybe I should look at something that's not necessarily this complicated, as an example. Leech us 4545TV page. Um. Hey, we got the ledger, but where's the TV? Oh, here's the TV page. Where's the source code? I mean, how do they do this? This is really cool. Um, documents, FAQ. confused. Documents, 
ledger. Uh, it doesn't have any document. It doesn't have any developer documentation. Oh, there's the Leech S4545 Slack. I remember hearing about that. Oh, nice. Undefeated. Well done. I like this team name. Wait, is that a team name or a player name? The Encresance. That must be... Oh. Okay, these team names are awesome. Just saying. It's Fiddler on the Roof versus the Encresance. Man. That's quite good. Oh, man. So, I'm drawn into this game. I mean, I swear, I've seen a position very similar to this before. Um, it's very human to want to be able to resolve that tension. To just do knight takes d7, or do bishop takes f6, and just remove all the tension instantaneously. Um, and ultimately, I think that just this is going to liquidate down to a draw. Um, White's going to manage to push his pawns fast enough to offset the fact that his d4 pawn is weak. Um, I really perceive that a draw will happen unless a player makes some kind of really inaccurate move. Oh, that's nice to carry your team. Um, in order to carry the team, you need to win some games, so I assume you've done. You've won at least one of those, if not more. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I'm not using a Goliath app. Um, wait. This is the thing I said earlier that I wish I still had open so I could show you it. Now I've got it open, and it's not nearly as impressive as I thought it would be. Um, there's like 20 examples of how to do a client socket connection. In Rack, uh, running your socket app. Load adapter, da 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 da. Seriously, how did I do this? I just like copied and pasted the code and it was like, oh, this one. This client supports the plain text WS and the encrypted WSS and has exactly the same interface as a socket you would use in a web browser. On the wire, it identifies itself as HYBI 13. Uh, well, as you expect the status and headers, using the status and headers methods to connect via proxy, da -da -da. okay, sub protocol negotiation, Protocol extension. That's kind of cool. It's more than I need. I mean, goodness. This documentation is most thorough. Oh, two and a half out of three. Very nice. Round two. Ouch. <laughs> That's got to hurt for your opponent. Although, probably not hurting as much as your round three game. Um. I mean, it's one thing to just blunder mate in one and be like, oh, oh well, it's over. It's another thing to blunder a knight and then be like, oh, well, if this were just me, I could just resign it. But since I'm on a team, I have to play it out. And you play it out for like 40 moves and then you resign it. And in some ways, it's a lot better to just blunder the mate in one. Um, anyway, so yeah. Fay WebSocket. It's magic. It's a general purpose WebSocket implementation extracted from the Fay project that provides classes for easily building WebSocket servers and clients. It does not itself preside at the server, but makes it easy to handle connections using an existing Rack server application. Um, so, yeah, basically all this does is just WebSockets and that's the server side and like i was able to find this pretty easily so that was pretty cool 
Never resign. You got it back to him because you drew out the end game. Where it was King Rook versus King Rook Rook Bishop plus four. Oh man. That sounds like quite a game. Um So I'm still confused. How is it? How is it that this works? I mean, clearly, these connections must somehow reconnect periodically. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to see uh, the boards. I mean, you can't just leave a socket connection open forever because then the server would eventually run out of possible slots to add a connection and run out of resources. So there's got to be something, I don't know. Um, somehow it knows. Now let's put up a classical game. Let's get a board that we can actually see the pieces. Uh, this is okay. I actually am kind of partial to the glass set, although it doesn't look nice on most of these boards. I mean, this is one I've used before, but it's difficult to distinguish the pieces. It looks beautiful. Oh, just call ping. Why oh, didn't you say so? Okay, no, that makes sense. Um. Okay, well, I'm bad. Uh, ws dot send. Wait, ws dot ping. I can do that. I think parentheses are optional. I don't know. Let's try it. We're open. We got a message. We ping back. Got a message. We ping back. Hey, look. We got some messages. Woo! Okay. There's the game. Oh, there's your game. Okay. Unfortunately, my chat window is not on um, the same device as um, the uh, stream at the moment. Sicilian. Close Sicilian. F4, G6 make things fun. Um, I admit I don't know this stuff very well. Knight g7, white plays d4. Eh, okay, I'll just admit ignorance with the opening. But that's... Oh, there he blunders the knight. <laughs> and one, two, skip a few. Um, wow, white's pretty far down. Um, yeah, white plays c4, just trying to get out of the... Ouch. You know, if I were a down, a rook, a bishop, and two pawns, I would probably resign around move 27, if not earlier. Um, well, I guess that's where he blundered the rook. So either there was some time trouble situation going on, or who knows what. Uh, well, there I got a close on my socket. So apparently I have to like reopen the socket periodically or something. Um, I guess that's okay. Is there anything else I need to know? I mean, from that I'm able to get the game IDs. From the game IDs I could use the API. It's really an academic exercise. Yeah, yeah. I suspected it wasn't time trouble. Because um, even in time trouble it doesn't make much sense to play that out. Oh, and this is 4545 also. But yeah, I'm thinking at this point it's an academic exercise to use those IDs that are in the Ruby or inside the response that's provided over the web socket that's captured by Ruby. 
Um, yeah. I mean, you win a night in the opening. If you don't do something dumb, um, you'll be fine. There's no need to overly stress about potential messing up there. Let's see, is there... So, there's the Ruby Chess Library. There's the API here. API limits. At least like one second between requests. If you're a speed of 429, please wait a full minute before resuming usage. Do not automate computer analysis requests. In fact, there's a cap on that now. So even if you do that, um, you'll be capped pretty quickly. Um, so I could fetch a game, but I'm not sure if there's a way to subscribe to a game and listen for moves on said game. Um, I mean, clearly somehow it works in the browser. Um, and I could reverse engineer all that. But the more progress I make with that, um, closer that hackers also get. To making progress at that sort of thing. So what's the point? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm still confused. I need to look at um, the code that does this board and figure out how it receives the moves in real time. Oh, hang on. We've got our developer tools, right? Let's go to our network graph. Expand this back down this way. Uh, wait, why is this... Where the heck is the request? I mean... Okay, sure, we got our socket open, but... That's really weird. Okay, let's go to our timeline. Click the record or hit Control E. Okay. Can't find the button, so let's just do the Control E thing. Uh, capture about 10 seconds worth of traffic and see if we get anything interesting. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how to interpret any of this. Painting. Oh. This is just saying what the browser is doing during all this time. Um, I don't even care. I want to just know what's going on in the network. Like, web sockets, all, oh, something. How is this even working? Filter, clear. So, I mean, we get all the all the page content, but it's really the socket that remains open afterward. <coughs> really, the socket remains open, and that's the way by which we receive moves from the game. It's like if I'm watching a bullet game... Nope, don't full screen that. I want to do the opposite of full screen. Um... Okay. I mean, there should be something here indicating that an event happened, right? Um, filter, screenshots, something. I don't, oh, oh, wait. What's going on here? Can I expand that? So, like, there's our initial page refresh, and we've got the socket that's open the whole time, but... Um, I'm not sure where in here we're obtaining the moves of the live game. Uh, tunes based on the position would be pretty cool. Um, okay. Um... So, 
I mean, how is it that this receives... I don't know what's going on here. I mean, somehow over a socket we're receiving something that gives us the moves. Um, and I mean, so I could go over, I don't know, co connect it to this, copy link address, and then go over here, fin main.rb. Drop this in, and then Ruby main.rb. Wait, what? Am I getting moves in here? We're getting tons of messages. We got a move, we got a move, we got a move, we got a move. Okay. So apparently that's a valid way to register for moves. Um, SRI equals blah 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 and random equals blah okay so how does that work um let's see so we got the WSS is the protocol socket leech is the site 9028 is a port number chosen by Lee Chess. The um, port game ID color socket question mark SRI equals token maybe? Uh, and random equals random? Something like that? Um, protocol host something in that form? Am I maybe interpreting that right? Um, there's also proprietary compression use. Oh, that's maybe that's why these messages look so funky. Though I can't imagine doesn't make any sense to format the messages this way. Um, I think for server-side game compression, the moves are um, compressed into a different format. Um, I guess one thing worth noting is this thing, but I mean, what can you say about that? So here I got move, UCI, SAN, FEN, ply, clock, white, black, desks, A1 has these valid, de oh. For each square you get a list of valid destinations. I am shocked that that's actually part of the message. Um, There must have been a rook on E1, because it can go to A1, to C1, D1, F1, and G1, and H1. But why not B1? That seems puzzling to me. Like, really puzzling. D2 can go to C4, E4, B3, B1. F3, F1. So it's not like there's a white knight on B1. Um, but somehow E1 cannot go to B1. Either that's a bug or who knows. They put it there for easier variant support. Okay. I guess there's some sense to that. I'm still really stumped though, like... I don't get it. Is there a piece on B1 that I need to be aware of? 
There's A1, G2, G6, B2, F2, E2, H1, D2, E1. But there's... As far as I can tell... I mean... Wait, we've got the FEN string here. What am I talking about? Um, I should just... Leechus.org slash editor. Drop this in. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Uh, that was weird. I think I understand what that was about. Uh, never mind. That was just a typo. That's pretty funny, though, that I could go back to the home page by typing that in. Um, but yeah, why can't the rook on h1... I mean, it can go to a1 or c1, but it can't go to b1. If I just, like, click on this... Well, I have to go to the analysis board. If I click on this... Oh, you saw for a brief instant, it did highlight the b1 and c1 and all that. Uh, that was really weird. I didn't just imagine that. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, color me confused. Um, anyway, that wasn't my goal, but that's pretty funny. Um, so... So now what? I mean... Okay, so they put that there for easier variant support. We were able to get back moves from a live game. I mean, that was the goal. Uh, how long have we been streaming? We've been here for 43 minutes. So I think that took us 40 minutes. Um to do a pretty simple test, but you have to know what the test is and how to do it before you try it. Um, also just not be completely brain dead at the end of a work day, but yeah, what can you do? So yeah, proof of concept works. Um, we absolutely can establish a web socket and um, now, can we do this from scratch? I don't know. Maybe. Um, I suspect you have to... Uh, um, well, I don't even know. I mean, we saw we were able to steal the WebSocket from the browser. And uh, this is actually running on a different computer. But... I suppose an external interface wouldn't know as long as I'm still connecting to port 9028. It might identify a different user agent, like a different browser, but it wouldn't know that this is ripped off. Um, you know, sending hello world over that socket doesn't make much sense. Um, making moves over the socket, that could, if we had that kind of capability, that could enable the tandem chess variant, which could be fun. I guess, maybe. But, yeah, I'm not interested in writing a robot that can play moves at the moment. Some time ago I did have an interest in that, in being able to speak the moves. And then, as they're spoken, um the computer would just play them for you. So you don't even have to use the mouse. And ideally, you would combine that with some sort of natural language processing algorithm, which would uh, parse what you're saying, figure out what you mean, and highlight the appropriate squares and put arrows and play moves and all that fun stuff. Ideally, you'd have the full suite of all of that. Um, but, you know, even getting this proof of concept that, yes, it's possible to do a WebSocket or a secure WebSocket connection and receive moves for a live game, um, it's pretty cool. 
Um, the rest is just busy work, honestly. Um, the rest being start from scratch. Make sure that... And from scratch, I don't mean just code-wise. No, I mean um, start from just a client that has no WebSocket to begin with. Um, initiate a WebSocket. Exchange the token. Verify the SSL certificate. Um, properly authenticate against the server. And then use that token to identify... Uh, well, use that in your future requests when you are, um, well, I'm struggling with the terminology, but just make more requests, figure out what games are going on, and watch them. Um, so those would all be things that are doable. But yeah, we've gotten the code, proof of concept, all works. We see that we get messages that tell us the number of people who are watching the game, uh, what games are in progress, the player names of the game in progress, like if there's a new Atomic game, I think this replaces the old channel for, the old player for the Atomic game or something. Um, so you can see games pop in and out on the TV. Um, yeah, it's all pretty cool stuff. And... Um, obviously this is not as well supported as the public API. This could change at any moment. Um, there's no guarantee here until you have actually a public uh, API that's documented in this sort of format where they say make this kind of request, expect this sort of result, here's how it's formatted, here's an example, uh, fetch a game by ID, here's etc. Um, these sorts of things are well documented and will not break overnight. Um, likely the other things won't break overnight either because, I mean, who's got time to break things and then fix them? But, um, anyhow. So, uh, yeah. So how'd my prediction do here?